Immediately after, Adolf Hitler rose to the position of Chancellor in Germany. Concentration camps first opened within the country. They were used for some of the worst crimes the world had ever seen, and it's estimated that more than a thousand camps, including subcamps, were set up within the Third Reich, and that millions died within their barbed wire fences. We associate them today with the Holocaust, with the horrific persecutions of millions, and after the war many trials took place to bring to justice the staff who worked inside of them. One camp established east of the city of Danzig was Stuttov, and after the Second World War, trials were held that brought the guards who were responsible for the mass murder, slaughter and cruelty that occurred inside of the camp to justice. However, what shocked a number of people around the world during the trial is the fact that many of the guards who stood trial were in fact women, women who in some cases were rather young. Many of these after the trial were sentenced to death and were all hanged together. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Stutthof's female guards. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Stutthof Concentration Camp was the first camp set up outside of the borders of Germany during World War II and it began its operations on the 2nd of September 1939. It was a camp linked to the ethnic cleansing of Poland that included executing the elite of Polish society, including politicians, religious leaders and intellectuals in the area of West Prussia and around Danzig. Lists had been drawn up even prior to the invasion of Poland for people to be arrested, and the Nazis had plans to open up camps following the invasion for these prisoners. It was originally a camp in which civilians would be kept, however after a huge expansion effort took place, it became similar to Dachau, and a labour education camp, in which prisoners would be forced to conduct gruelling work. The first prisoners, around 150 of them, arrived when it first opened, and these were Poles and Jews, who were arrested straight after the war broke out. Within a few weeks, the number of prisoners grew greatly to around 6,000, and initially all of the prisoners were Polish. The number of inmates grew as the war went on, with large amounts of Jews being deported to the camp, and many arrived from Auschwitz and other camps across Nazi-occupied lands. Throughout its years in operation, it saw 110,000 people pass through the gates, from all different countries. Amongst the prisoners were Jews from all over Europe, but also resistance fighters, Soviet prisoners of war, communists, psychiatric patients and many more. The main camp in Stutthof also had around 40 different subcamps that served it during the conflict, with different prisoners based in different subcamps, producing things for different companies. Some of these companies were involved in the war effort, using slave labour to make parts for the German war machine. For example, an armaments factory was based at the camp, but also in the war, a Fokker Wolf aircraft factory was also built there. Conditions at Stutthof were very brutal and extremely tough. Inside, disease was rife and thousands of prisoners died from starvation. A couple of large typhus epidemics killed thousands of prisoners in 1942 and 1944, and this led to selections taking place. During these selections, the SS officers and doctors would select prisoners who were too ill or too weak to continue working to be sent to a small gas chamber that was based on the site. Executions also occurred there, and many Polish resistance fighters who found themselves imprisoned were shot dead. As mentioned, there was a small gas chamber on the site, and using Zyklon B to mass murder prisoners began in June 1944. It has been estimated that around 4,000 prisoners, mostly Jewish women and children, were murdered inside of the gas chambers before the camp was evacuated. Now, the guards at the camp were incredibly sadistic, and there are examples of them inflicting barbaric punishment onto the inmates. Jenny Wanda Barkman was a guard who was, despite just being 24, when she was executed, she was noted for her horrific treatment. She was one who selected prisoners to go to the gas chambers and also regularly beat women prisoners to their deaths. Barkman was just one of many guards who was noted for their barbaric treatment, with many prisoners being clubbed and beaten to death. It was estimated that overall, around 65,000 prisoners died at Stutthof, with many also drowning in the boggy mud that was inside of the camp. The doctors also killed many injured and sick prisoners inside of the infirmary using lethal injections. There was even allegations made that the SS used human fat from corpses to make soap, and that hundreds of prisoners were executed for this purpose to just make soap. 
so Stutthof had an extremely high death count, executions were prominent, and the guards were noted for their horrific treatment. Suffering continued as in late January 1945, a full-scale evacuation of the camp was ordered. 50,000 prisoners, mostly Jews, were forced out of the camp. 5,000 of them were forced to march to the Baltic coast, and when they arrived there they were forced to walk into the water, and then guards shot them indiscriminately with their machine guns. Other prisoners marched towards eastern Germany, but after being cut off by the Soviets they were forced to return. The horrific treatment during the death march by the SS guards, as well as being provided with little or no food, and being forced to walk in the freezing winter conditions, meant thousands died on the death march. The remaining prisoners a few months later were taken from the camp by sea, and more prisoners were thrown into the sea and shot. It's thought that in the evacuation of Stutthof, 25,000 prisoners died. It was eventually liberated on the 9th of March 1945, but only around 100 prisoners were found there, those who had hid from the death march. Following the Second World War, many war crimes trials took place, including the Nuremberg trials, which aimed to bring the leaders of the Nazi right to justice. But many less high-profile trials took place to punish those guards inside of the concentration camps, and some of these were known as the Stutthof trials. These were a series of trials to prosecute the guards and officials responsible for the crimes that occurred at Stutthof. There were four trials in the series that began in 1946 and ended the following year. One issue was that despite around 2,000 SS staff working at Stutthof, only 72 SS officers and six female overseers were ever brought to trial. The trials were held in Gdansk, and during the first trial, the six women who were accused of being Alfserins at the camp were placed on trial. These were Jenny Wanda Barkman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Klaff, Eva Prides, Gerda Steinhardt, and Erdna Beilhardt. During the trial, witness statements and much evidence was heard inside of the courtroom, and it was noted that the women in particular did not seem to take the trial very seriously. In particular, Jenny Barkman was noted to have been more bothered with her hair, and that she smirked during the presentation of horrific evidence, and even flirted with the guards inside of the courtroom. Of the women on trial, Jenny Barkman, Elizabeth Becker, Von der Klaff, Eva Perides, and Gerda Steinhoff were sentenced to death, with Werner Beilhardt sentenced to five years imprisonment. Along with the women, a number of men were sentenced to death, all to be executed together on the 4th of July 1946. On that date, all of those who were condemned were brought to the city of Gdansk, and in particular, the Biskupia Gorka, on a large hill that stands in that area of the city. They had been taken to the hill by car, being guarded by Soviet officials. At the site there was a huge crowd that had gathered to watch the proceedings, around 200,000 people lined the area near to the gallows. The gallows in particular here were very large, and it was possible to execute two of the condemned on one gallows, and even three on the central gallows, such was the size of them. They were also very tall, ensuring that the crowd in attendance saw the bloody proceedings easily. Beginning with Jenny Barkman, the women and the men executed that day were all loaded onto trucks, and then these were backed up to the gallows. Barkman was the first to be executed that day, and she wore a simple dress and at 5pm stood under the gallows. Whilst on the truck, her arms and ankles were tied together, and a noose was passed over the wooden structure. The hangman then placed a noose around her neck, and final preparations were made. She was stood facing the huge crowds, and then suddenly the truck drove away, leaving Jenny Barkman suspended in the air, with nothing to stand on, hanging in front of the huge crowd. She was there dangling, and her hands and feet twitched, and she lost a shoe as she struggled for breath before turning limp and dying. She was the first of eleven executed that day upon the hill in this manner, and the women who were condemned were all executed first. The five women were then left hanging, whilst the men were executed, also on the gallows next to them. The public spectacle was absolutely huge, with eleven bodies dangling from the huge gallows. For many who were stood on the hill during the executions, some small part of revenge was had for the horrors that were inflicted at Stutthof concentration camp. Overall, a huge amount of people suffered and died inside the confines of the camp, and all of the guards who were executed were killed for their barbaric treatment of prisoners. The women who were executed had different roles inside of the camp, 
but they all had one thing in common. They were happy to inflict the mass suffering and happy to murder prisoners with their own hands or even select them to go to their deaths inside of the gas chambers. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.